So what is a normal map and how do normal maps actually work? So in this video, normal maps explained in simple terms, uh, kind of. So normal maps are image files. So let's start there. Uh, we'll start with the image files themselves. So non-procedural materials are driven by image textures. Those textures have textiles, which are texture elements. You can sort of think of them like pixels. They're the smallest container of color data in an image, but they're not really pixels since they can be larger or smaller than a pixel on your monitor, depending on your level of zoom, which is why they're called texels. So the color of these texels are governed by numerical values stored in the three channels of the color image file. So the red, green, and blue channels. There's sometimes also a fourth channel, usually called alpha, which is sometimes used for things like transparency. So 8-bit color image files have three to four color channels with values of 0 to 255 for each channel on each texel. Since 8 bits, each with two possible values, 0 or 1, gives you up to 2 to the power of 8 possible combinations of values, so 256, which is a range of 0 to 255 since we also count 0 as a value. And these values of 0 to 255 in each color channel are what is used to determine the color of each pixel, or rather each texel, in an image file. But this isn't just for color. So 3D applications can also use those numerical values in each texel as data. So they can be combined with color image samples and shaders to drive shading effects to affect your 3D model and other things as well. Since the R, G, and B values of each texel correspond to simple number values, they can be interpreted as non-color data. This is why Blender's image texture node has a drop-down menu to switch an image sample from sRGB color space to non-color. You'll recognize some of these types of non-color data maps since they're often black and white. You can think of things like metallic maps and roughness maps. This is because this non-color data only requires actually a single channel. For example, the surface of an object is either rough or it's not. It's either metallic or it's not. So this only actually requires uh, data values in a single channel to describe. As a result, texture maps of this type often have the same data duplicated in all three color channels. Now in 3D modeling, the R, G, and B channel values, when used as non-color data, can also actually be used another way as well. They can be used to correspond to vectors in 3D space. So R, G, and B equals X, Y, and Z coordinates in the 3D viewport. These are actually color-coded in Blender in the gizmo and also in the axis colors in the 3D viewport as well. You'll notice that blue corresponds to Z, green corresponds to Y, and red corresponds to X. So the RGB channels are often used for effects that require data about directions in 3D space. A good example of this is vector displacement. And to show you this, I made a simple image with three colors on it, red, green, and blue. You can plug this image texture into a vector displacement node and use it to displace a subdivided plane, letting the color of the material itself drive the displacement direction. So I simply cut this plane into four by color and merged the pieces into one object. And I plugged the red, green, and blue image texture into both the albedo and into the vector displacement node. And as I turn up the vector displacement scale, you'll see that the squares move in the direction of their color. Blue areas go up, green areas go along the y-axis, and red along the x-axis. So each texel uses R, G, and B to describe a vector direction in 3D space. The vertexes in your mesh are mapped to a corresponding texel region on the displacement texture by your UV map. So they displace in the direction of the underlying texel on your image map, for which, for displacement, describes a 3D vector from the origin to the coordinates described by the 3D values of the underlying color channels. Now, I'm also not a vector math person, so someone can correct me if this is mistaken, but I believe this normalized vector has a length of one, which gets multiplied by the scale in your vector displacement node. So if you set a displacement scale of one for vertexes assigned by the UV map to a texture region containing fully saturated color channel values, you'll find that they get displaced by exactly one meter or one blender unit. So how does this actually relate to normal maps and how does it help us understand how normal maps actually work? Well, 3D objects have a few parts. We have the 3D object, which is defined by the vertex positions or the topology of your object, but then we also have the 
we also have the shading, which is, which is produced by the shader and the render engine. So vector displacement changes the position of the vertexes that make up your mesh using the directions described by the color data of the texels, which are assigned to those regions of your mesh by the UV map. And we talked about it because it's a great way to understand how texture maps and 3D vectors work, because those will help us to understand how normal maps work. So normal maps also use this non-color data from image samples. However, they use that data differently. So they don't affect vertex positions at all, but instead normal maps actually use that texel data to affect the shading of the object. And they do this by perturbing the surface normals of the object according to the vector directions described by the RGB values for those texels. So 3D objects have normals, which are also vectors in 3D space that are used to calculate how bright or dark regions of object faces should be. These are vertex normals. The normal values are assigned for each vertex. When objects are flat shaded, the object is shaded as if the interpolated values between normals for this face are all perpendicular to that face. This gives the appearance of flat faces with harsh transitions between them. But when you enable shade smooth, the normals and the interpolated values between them instead get averaged across the surface. This gives the illusion of a smooth transition across faces, even though the geometry itself is actually flat. You can visualize this inside Blender by turning on split normals. So if you tab into edit mode on an object which is flat shaded, you'll notice that there are multiple split normals per vertex for all of the vertexes on your object. The reason for this is because the vertex normals for this object aren't being averaged across faces. And as a result, all of the interpolated normals between those vertex normals across the surface of your object are also appearing perpendicular to that face. But if you now shade an object smooth and then tab into edit mode again, you'll notice that there are no longer multiple split normals per vertex on this object. The reason for this is because that vertex data is now being shared, or rather across vertexes that share adjacent faces, those multiple normals are now being averaged. And the interpolated normals between normals are also averaged, and this gives the illusion of a smooth surface even though the geometry here is actually still flat. So these shading normals brighten or darken the RGB values of pixels shaded across your object to give the appearance of smooth shading. But we can also fake this effect for localized regions of the mesh by perturbing the surface normals in other directions, giving the illusion of depth by darkening or lightening parts of the surface, since those Interpolated normals are used to determine the brightness of regions of the faces on your objects. This allows you to get details through shading while having fewer polys in your objects. And you do this with a normal map, which tells your material shader how to displace the normals across the surface of your object. So those RGB values that we learned about for each texel in your normal map will tell the shader how to adjust that shading and in which direction, which affects the brightness across the surface of your object to give the illusion of depth. And because normal maps are also RGB, they have three color channels which together encode the direction of a 3D vector on the axes. Red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. This is how normal maps fake depth without adding any more vertices to your object. The vectors described by each texel in your normal map perturb the interpolated normals of your object across the surface, allowing for the surface of that object to be selectively brightened or darkened. This is why normal maps appear to give depth, but the illusion breaks when viewed from a very flat angle. It's not actually changing the geometry of that flat surface, it just uses the 3D vector data of the underlying material's normal map to adjust brightness across the surface. P.S. One final note on this topic, this is also how bump maps work. So a bump map does just this, but only with a single channel of color data. So this is why a bump map texture images appear black and white. But as a result, the vector data is only 1D instead of 3D. Since the data is much less rich than normal maps, this means that bump maps actually give less, uh, a much less precise shading effect. So there you go. That's everything that you need to know about normal maps and how normal maps work. If you like these videos, then uh, you know don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I will know that I should make more of these technical videos. So that's it for now.